why does the break in the thumbnail look so goofy? Well, I'm glad that you asked because this is the Walker Nero 762 and that's what today's video is going to be about. The Nero 762 from Walker Defense is an evolution of their previous entry into the market, the Nero 556. We have a full video on that product if you want to check it out, it'll be linked in the description box down below and we'll probably reference it a few times in this video. This is a direct laser metal centered brake made of Inconel 718, which is a fancy way of saying 3D printed Inconel. The focus of this project was to generate a muzzle device that eliminates muzzle rise and reduces recoil in the 30 caliber space which is not as easy as it sounds on the surface. Remember that there are a lot of calibers in 30 cal. This brake is rated for 300 Winchester Magnum and is optimized for 308 out of an 18 inch barrel for its center. To accommodate this, it has been threaded 5 8 by 24 and is DLC coated. The device is also pre-drilled for a pin if you want to do an overall length build. The thing about additive manufacturing is that it allows us to do things that otherwise would be impossible via traditional manufacturing means. The Nero pretty much embodies this concept, and instead of traditional vent brakes, the Nero uses a vectored flow nozzle to direct expanding gases into a dimpled compression ramp and curved blast surface. These features work in concert to direct gas on a different trajectory than the projectile, forcing the muzzle down and forward to balance recoil. Anyway, enough technical speak and pretty pictures. Let's go to the range and see how it performs. Walker Nero 762, 300 blackout test. Auto, of course. You hate to rip through $100 worth of ammunition in a couple seconds, but you know, this is for science. So that's what we're gonna do. This is Fioki 150 grain supers. Let's see if she does. Ninety rounds down the pipe, <laughs> and it shot really, really flat. I could see even in this magnified scope here, which is a what is it? A four power? I can't remember what the power on this scope is. But I was able to keep the target on visual the entire time I was doing that. Got a little bit, a little bit greedy on my hold there. Burnt myself pretty good on that gas block, but yeah, three hundred blackout will do. And now I've got a big pile of grade A 300 blackout brass that I can put up on the site. So you guys know that we had to do 308, so why not do a short barrel 308, right? This is a CMMG Mark III, multiple videos out on this. I don't know if this gun is going to run like this or not because I forget what the gas setting is. I think I shot it suppressed last. We'll see what happens. Shooting 308A. Seem to run those just fine. Let's go get the Nero. This thing's still a little bit hot, a little bit hot, <laughs> but I have to stop. I'm confident that you guys are going to see this on video, but I have to describe it. When I shot the 308 without anything on it, there was muzzle rise. And 
it has to show up on video because I could feel it so prolifically that the muzzle was being driven down by this device. So cool, setting up for the next test. Testing a muzzle breakout, I should probably put it on the most obnoxious gun that I own. And it's like, well, what's the most obnoxious gun that I own? That one's easy. Let's do this thing. So 7.62x39, good old fashioned 7.62x39. But before we do, we need to talk about muzzle brakes for a second and why the Nero is a different concept. It looks like a muzzle brake, but it's something else because it doesn't operate like a brake. It operates like a throttle, which is completely different. So this isn't quite long enough for our demonstration purposes, so I brought this out here because it's got a nice long handle on it. This is a 7.62 by 54 R round. And if I take this thing, First, look at the anatomy of this. We have a main chamber, and then we have two vent ports on the top. And the way this thing works is basically, we're gonna take this projectile, and about right there, we have left the muzzle of the barrel and now have entered the brake. And what that has done is allowed the gas to start flowing around the projectile into that chamber, and as that bullet continues to move forward, move my finger out of the way there, to about right there, we have started to seal that chamber against the volume of the barrel, basically. And all of that gas is now going to want to leave those two chambers there on the top. And that's going to drive the muzzle down. Simultaneously, that bullet is still moving. And as it continues to move, about there, the diameter of the bullet has left the primary chamber and has now moved into the lateral vent chamber here on both sides. And the idea is now all that gas can flow out of both the top and out the sides, stabilizing it laterally. Again, the bullet gets to here and now it can't flow through the front because the bullet is obstructing its flow out the front and it's gotta go either out those ports or out those sides. So we're using basically gas jets to get this thing to work. The Nero doesn't do any of that, as we previously described. So very simply, what I've got here is this apparatus that we use for holding up the mediums for our different brush tests. And I've got a piece of notebook paper in there. And basically what I'm gonna do is move the Nero off until it no longer shreds that piece of paper. And we're gonna start right there because that's got a nice knot on the table. I don't think I'm gonna have to use this position because that's really close, but here goes nothing. As expected. Okay, just moved it. So I'll be honest and say that I was kind of hoping for prolific performance on this thing, like we saw in the 5.56 version of this break. And this one, I'm gonna venture to guess that this shorty 10 inch I think it's a 10 inch, 7.62 by 39 barrel is, I mean, if you take that thing off there, it is a fire breathing monster. So I can only guess that it's just over capacity, but hey, I can't believe that Walker would have tested something like this because this is pretty obnoxious. Now I have most of a magazine of 7.62 by 39 that I get to shoot. So now that I get some good range time on the Nero 7.62, I think there's a deep dive or two that we can take. But before we do, I want to talk about something that's um, kind of personal, but I don't normally use what you would typically think of as a traditional muzzle brake, like your two chamber, three chamber brakes, stuff like that. I use them from time to time, but generally speaking, I'm more of a flash suppressor and suppressor guy. And the reason that is, one, I own a lot of suppressors, <laughs> but two, I have a severely deviated septum and the right side of my face is very susceptible to pressure changes. And I have problems when I go scuba diving. You know, normally when I come up off the bottom when I scuba dive, like the right side is just bloody gush and nastiness. I know that I can get this fixed, but I care not to. Also, it's as simple for me in my day-to-day -day life as just leaving the muzzle brake at home. So if I'm gonna shoot a lot or shoot a lot of ammo, I just use something else that doesn't mess with me. This guy right here shot a lot of ammo through this thing. And I have to say, the, the concussion on this is not noticeable whatsoever. So maybe if you like put your hand right over top of it, you'd probably be able to notice it. But from shooting it, 
having it this far away from your face, excuse me, this far away from your face is not something that bothers me whatsoever. So feather in the cap of Walker, and I think that's probably due to some of the things that we talked about earlier in the video. So first off, 300 blackout. You should be seeing something on screen of me shooting the gun on full auto in slow motion. And you can see that the muzzle climb on this thing is almost non-existent. And the recoil reduction is so substantial on this thing that it lulled me into a false sense of aptitude because I shot this first, 300 blackout first, and then I was working on another project where I was shooting 5.56 in a gun that didn't have one of these things on it. And if you know anything about 300 blackout, it recoils more than 5.56. It's a simple energy equation. Well, the 5.56 is walking me a little bit because I went from this to a traditional flash hider, bird cage type thing, and uh, I was unprepared. Moving on to 7.62 by 39 out of the short barreled gun. Now, I know that I kind of poo pooed a little bit there at the range. <laughs> Up to this point, my experience with the guys from Walker is that they've just been able to make miracles happen. And that was super close. Any other break that I have access to, as in anything in this room, would have completely shredded the paper at that distance. And you also have to remember that the gun that we're using is really, really obnoxious. We're talking about people at range days try to get away from it because it is so fire-breathing monster. And then, of course, saving 308 for last because I thought this was the most impressive. Now, again, this thing was optimized for a long barrel, 18-inch barrel, 308, but on the short barrel 308, it really, really shined. You can clearly see in this side-by-side -side that there is almost no recoil with the Nero on versus without anything on the end of it. It really does want to jump around a lot, and this helps substantially. So that said, the Walker Nero 762 is definitely something that should be on your radar, especially if you're looking for a device to reduce your recoil and muzzle climb. And I also just got off the phone with the people from Walker Defense, and you should see something over on the VSO Affiliates page to help out with these things, because I'm going to be honest, these things are not inexpensive. As you can imagine, Inconel is not inexpensive to one, procure, or two, to work with, but then also, in addition to that, metal 3D printing is not an inexpensive technology. Normally, when people think of 3D printing, they think of rapid prototyping, cheap things because of the mediums that we're working in. 3D printing is cheaper than the alternative, which is injection molding for rapid prototyping, but they're fragile. We use metal 3D printing not because it is cheap and fast, but because there are things that we cannot do with traditional manufacturing means that you can do with additive manufacturing when it comes to metal. That is going to carry a little bit higher price tag than, say, something that would take a more traditional form and not be able to take advantage of those geometric advances that they've obviously built into this thing. So anyway, off my soapbox, definitely check them out. Walker Defense, Nero 762. Thanks for watching. I had a great time making today's video and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then sound off in the comment section down below. If you're shy and you don't want to leave a comment, I understand. There are plenty of buttons that you can play with down there and they all help out.